I think everyone has heard about shrimp that set up cleaning stations on coral reefs. You're probably also familiar with wrasses that do the same thing. They eat the parasites off the client fish that come to their stations. But have you ever heard of a pygmy angelfish cleaning off parasites? Hi guys and girls, I'm Reefman, and today we are talking about the very first report of cleaning by a pygmy angelfish. If you would like to read the paper, it's linked down below as usual. It was published in the Journal of Coral Reef Studies in late 2020. Cleaner fish and shrimp fill an important role on coral reefs and even in our aquariums. They clean up parasites and clean off dead tissue and mucus from their clients. They'll even clean your skin when you're working in your aquarium. They'll give you an at-home manicure if you don't mind them picking away. There are two general types of cleaner animals on coral reefs. Dedicated cleaners are animals that spend their entire lives cleaning other animals. They get 100% of their food from eating those parasites, and they can eat quite a few of them even though they're very small, small enough to fit in the gills and the mouths of their clients. The blue streak cleaner wrasse can clean almost 2,300 fish every single day, removing about 1,200 parasites from their skin, and that's in a single day. For this reason, fish like the blue streak cleaner wrasse don't make the best aquarium inhabitants unless you have a truly gargantuan tank. They get all of their food just by eating those parasites. And hopefully our aquariums don't have that many parasites, so they go hungry. The gobies and wrasse in general encompass every known dedicated cleaner species. The second group of cleaners is called facultative cleaners. These are just opportunistic cleaners that will eat other foods as well as the parasites off other fish's skin. Wrasse are the most common faculative cleaners, and we know of 63 different wrasse species that do it. But wrasse are not the only reef fish that sometimes clean other fish. Some angelfish do, specifically the holocanthus and pomacanthus angelfish, and some butterfly fish are also known to do this. All told, we know of 208 fish and 51 species of shrimp that set up stations to clean other reef fish. But we've never seen a pygmy angelfish maintain a cleaning station, until now. The authors of the paper noticed cleaning behavior from both bicolor and keyhole angelfish in a huge 20-foot tall aquarium at the James Cook University in Australia. While it's true, this is the first time that pygmy angelfish have been seen to clean other fish, they didn't actually appear to be particularly well suited for the task. Several times the client fish jolted, probably because a painful bite was delivered by the overzealous cleaner. Pygmy angelfish have a comparatively strong bite as opposed to more common cleaners like wrasse or shrimp, which just carefully pick things off the surface of the skin. The weaker bites of those more common cleaner fish decrease the chances of collateral damage happening while cleaning. They also tend to have behavioral and physical adaptations that allow them to carefully clean and communicate with their clients via fin movement. Imagine a shark trying to carefully nip off a tiny parasite. It's just not going to happen. Pygmy angelfish, on the other hand, have no adaptation, like those sharks don't, for cleaning, and their mouths have bites that are designed for cutting through tough sponge and algae growing on rocks, which is what they eat in the wild. It's also possible that this is really just a behavior that only ever happens in captivity. The tank in Australia didn't have any dedicated or facultative cleaners in it, so it's possible that the angelfish are just taking advantage of the situation. We do see that in lumpfish, which are raised with farmed salmon, just to eat the parasites off their skin, but they only ever do that in farm settings, and not in the wild. There is some evidence that this isn't the case, though, that these angelfish were able to communicate with their clients via their fins and body movement. Lumpfish, they don't do that, and we know for sure that the angelfish were, because we could see it happen. So there is at least some evidence that this isn't something that's only happening in captivity. Have you ever seen angelfish cleaning your tanks, or a larger fish in your tanks? I certainly haven't, but it is possible, apparently. I'm very curious if you've seen things like this in your tank. My potter's angelfish, they pick at rock and things like that all day long, but never at my Achilles tank, who pretty much just totally ignores them. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more like it, consider subscribing. I hope you had a great holiday season, and here's to a better 2021. Stay safe, have a fantastic day. Bye!